action Japanese role-playing game Sandland is a brand new title that will soon see the light of day, which is a faithful adaptation of its Japanese manga series written and illustrated by your one and only Mr. Akira Toriyama. I'm the Samara and I will be covering Sandland's overall gameplay, character progression, vehicle customization, explorations, and more. Stay tuned as I will provide my impressions and honest thoughts about this game so that ultimately you will determine if this game is for you. Sandland takes place in a world where both humans and demons suffer from an extreme water shortage, a world filled mostly with sand and its harsh weather conditions. You will be playing with Beelzebub, a prince and a son of Lucifer who will embark on a perilous journey to find the legendary spring hidden in the world. He is not alone in this adventure though. Accompanied by Sheriff's Frau, Beelzebub's chaperone who is named Thief, and a mysterious girl named Anne who is knowledgeable in vehicles. Together, they will be meeting a lot of new friends and foes as they venture to the unknown. Judging from the trailers and JRPG experience, our main cast will surely be involved in different events that will ultimately result in a grand endeavor. I wish I could add more into this, however the recent demo did not include any story background whatsoever and threw me straight to its gameplay. With the story and setting out of the way, heading straightly to Sandland's core gameplay. Judging from my experience so far, I can see that the core focus of developer Ilka is Sandland's gameplay since I find many interesting and fun aspects of its gameplay. The first thing that I want to talk about is level progression. Players will have the freedom to explore an open world filled with points of interest, enemies, and various locations. Advancing the story will require players to follow certain objectives guided by typical quest markers like in any other games. The world of Sandlands makes me feel that I'm exploring a small version of Zelda's Tears of the Kingdom's world. The overworld is divided into smaller regions and each of these regions is filled with hidden points of interest such as grottos, ruins, monster nests, radio towers, and more. Just like in any other game, players will be exploring the world to find radio towers which can provide intel to the overall map, defeat enemies that roam the land for parts and materials, and discover hidden locations that may provide new services to drastically help character progression. Optional areas such as grottos are usually hidden caves, and these caves often store treasure chests that provide materials and parts, while ruins are like your mini shrines from Tears of the Kingdom, or even camps where your party can rest and replenish both Beelzebub's health and his vehicles. Of course, you are not expecting to explore these lands on foot, are you? Well, you can do so if you wish to, but vehicles are the main focus of sandlands in both world exploration and combat. Players will have the freedom to use more than 6 different vehicles and every one of them has their strengths and weaknesses in terms of traversal and in combat. An example would be the motorbike which has thin armor and smaller HP compared to the other vehicles but is immensely faster in terms of moving speed and mostly being used in general exploration especially when covering a wide area. The second vehicle is the tank which is beefy and has a lot of HP and usually equipped with high caliber weaponry which deals a lot of damage, perfect for assaulting a group of enemies or even taking out bosses. Just like in the real world though, it suffers from having slow movement speed. The battle armor on the other hand is definitely not a slouch. Compared to the tank, it has thick armor as well and high HP, but the main difference is it can equip multiple loadouts and is also capable of melee combat. These are the available vehicles that I managed to experience myself during my time in the demo. Currently, there are still a lot of other vehicles in store for us and I can't wait to try every one of them. Capable of different loadouts as well and can provide more utility or even help players traverse different kinds of terrains. You can summon your vehicle anytime and anywhere in Sandland by using the good old Dragon Ball capsule technology. So when exploring difficult to traverse areas like ruins, vehicles play a vital role when progressing. I remember this one time that I had to cross a long dark pit and the only way for me to get across was by using my customized lightweight motorbike and speed my way through the ramp to reach the other end. I find it enjoyable and I can't help but to think that vehicles in Sandlands are comparable to your Sonic devices in Tears of the Kingdom. The next thing that I want to talk about is character customization and progression. Just like in any JRPG, Beelzebub can gain experience after killing enemies in the field. As Beelzebub's levels up, 
he gains skill points that he can use to unlock more abilities in his small skill tree. The players can use in combat which I will discuss in a minute. Your companions Rao and Thief and also Anne will have their own skill tree as well so they can provide Beelzebub better support buffs or traditional attacks later on. But before anything else, if you are into straight to the point guides or just love Japanese role playing games like this one or RPG in general, subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button and it will surely help me a lot. Join our Discord server as we are building an empire where you can find like minded people who loves the genre. Now back to the video. When the different types of vehicles that we can access are fun enough, how much more if we will be given the ability to fully customize our vehicles? In Sandland, indeed, you can. This is what makes Sandland special and in my opinion is the best part of the game. You will have the freedom to shape all of the vehicles that I have mentioned and shown you so far according to your preference and playstyle. Your tank can be a full assault monster equipped with a fully loaded miniguns or make your battle armor a full assault mech that can blast through targets. There are hundreds of unique parts and weapons ranging from cannons, railguns, missile launchers, and more that will be available in the game so expect dozens of fun and engaging hours in making your ultimate vehicles. Remember you can bring 5 different vehicles with you and each of them will have different loadouts and specialties so there is a lot of room for creativity here. Not only you can boost your vehicle's firepower by loading weapons but you can also boost its overall defense and performance. Even have a personal touch with these vehicles by repainting them and even adding design decals. Express your personality while making the ultimate killing machines. As the player progresses, vehicles can also be upgraded with the parts and materials they gathered across the field and I can't wait to see each of the vehicles full potential. With the customization out of the way, let's move on to combat. Combat in Sandland is rather simple and yet fun. Depending on your loadouts, fights can be dynamic since you will have the option to cycle through your vehicles instantaneously just in case you need a different loadout in a fight. As for general enemies, you will be dealing with wildlife and bandits with their own vehicles and more. Mini bosses usually guard important locations so you will be constantly thrown into battle after battles and it is easy to be overwhelmed at first. As you progress, you will learn how to overcome these enemies by mastering the strengths and weaknesses of your vehicles and using them at the right time and moment is the key. General combat feels simple and yet satisfying and fun as you can feel the hits impacts and more. When it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat with Beelzebub, it has its own depth and as mentioned previously, you can unlock different abilities that he can use in combat. However, obviously you will not be able to beat tanks with bare fist, especially at early game. Vehicle warfare is the focus of Sandland and using Beelzebub in a pure melee fight feels secondary and unnecessary at times. Your companions on the other hand can provide Beelzebub with support attacks that have their own cooldowns like regular skills. Combat is out of the way, moving on to story progression. As Beelzebub and the band meet new friends through their journey, their main city Spino or the player's main hub in the game will thrive and be upgraded over time. Unlocking new NPCs will provide you with more services that can aid your progress such as repainting jobs for your vehicles or even selling new vehicle parts and more. Not only you will be filling up your hub with more NPC but your city will be thriving in no time. It upgrades and changes visually as well making your progress visually noticeable and is definitely one of Sandland's key features. As for myself, I love building simulation games or even survival games and this feature gives me that vibe and personal satisfaction. Players will also have the freedom to customize their own rooms with a handful of furniture to choose from. With different themes to explore, Building your own runes will surely provide tons of fun and engaging hours. Moving on to audio and visuals. Since Tales of Arise, we are already seeing even more visually appealing titles and Sandland is one of them. Accompanied by promising Japanese voice acting and even JRPG style soundtracks, Sandland nailed the audio and visual department in my book. The next thing that I want to talk about is release date and price point. Sandlands will offer a substantial amount of content as player can be lost for hours customizing their vehicles and experimenting with different builds or even expanding their cities. The recent trailers also revealed that we will have mini games such as races and more. Bounty hunting quests which requires players to hunt different types of bosses and make their vehicles to put into a test. Price at $59.99 USD at Steam and on PlayStation 
it is early for us to tell if the price will justify its cost but by the looks of it it is leaning to the positive side of things and i will keep an eye out on this one on release with that being said sandland will be released on the 26th of april this year now time for the actual verdict and to be honest this game was not on my radar until the recent demo was released unexpectedly i had tons of fun playing its demo what hooks me the most is the vehicle customization feature and its possible effects in combat i don't usually play shooter games but sandland fits just right in my taste with its arpg elements I love the fact that I can express my creativity and playstyle through my vehicles and playing the demo makes me even want to try other vehicles. And although there are times that the world feels barren and I had issues with enemy variety, it is too early to tell at this point, it is likely that the one that made us access in the demo is one of the most earliest parts of the game. If my schedule permits, I will 100% play this game. If you like open world games like Tears of the Kingdom and enjoy experimenting with a lot of stuff with a considerable amount of freedom like in Zonai devices or like in vehicles for this instance, there is a high chance that Sandland is for you. And also I made this video because I wanted to pay tribute to the great Mr. Akira Toriyama and thank you all for the years of inspiring us. Playing this game helps me to remember your legacy Mr. Toriyama and I can't thank you enough. Now moving forward, I want to know your thoughts about the game and will you be playing it? Loving the features that you have seen so far? Thank you all for watching and I will catch you on the next one.